uh, kicking off my inaugural video of leaf litter. Uh, I wanted to talk to you, start everything off with explaining what is black water, um, what is white water, uh, and what are some other varieties of water that we can get uh, in our aquariums. Uh, so I really want to start with an embarrassing uh, admission. This tank behind me and my other tanks that I have, they aren't actually black water. Something that's key to the to the the content of black water is that it's high in acidity and low in nutrients. Uh, I live in the middle of the prairies. There's a lot of limestone uh, just kind of hiding under about a meter and a half of soil and that really adds to the hardness of the water and that gets retained through the filtration process. And so everything that I have clocks in around 7 to 7.5 pH. I don't know the general hardness because I don't have a TDS meter. Um, so even though I've got a tint in my tanks, uh, you won't actually qualify this as black water. This is more of a tinted clear water setup. However, that doesn't mean that you can't call it a black water tank because a lot of black water fishes have been bred in conventional tap water and uh, will do just fine and will look just like the natural thing and nobody will know unless they happen to have a pH test on hand and get on in your aquarium and uh, that's weird so don't let them do that. Um, so black water is high in acidity, it usually happens in tropical environments, uh, stuff like uh, the Amazon is, is very notorious for this. Um, something interest, uh, interesting about the Amazon is that it's about 98.5 or 99.5% white water. Um, so white water is when there's a lot of sediment going on. It's not necessarily white. In fact, it's often brown or dark black. Um, and that's because of the high amount of clay and soil and uh, other things that get kicked up, uh, algae, this all gets uh, transported in the water, uh, making it almost impossible to see, which is why so much of the Amazon is unexplored and there's so many things hiding under the water that we just may or may not know about. Um, so in that small, you know, 0.5 to 1.5 percent of the, the streams that aren't white water, uh, that's where we get our, our true black water environments. These are often still, they're often stagnant, um, really high in acid because the forest surrounding it, because the forest is growing all day long, all week long, all year long, um, the trees and the plants and the, and everything else in the jungle leaches all of the nutrients out of the water before it uh, can actually go to benefit aquatic plants. So a lot of the nutrients that happen there are what, uh, when you've got leaves that fall down, um, branches, bark, uh, animal droppings, that kind of thing, so that falls in there. Um, because of the high acidity of the water, uh, which is caused by decomposing um, decomposing plant matter and that kind of thing, or what we'll call aquatic botanicals, uh, but because of the high acidity, there isn't a lot of invertebrates uh, that you would find common to a lot of other aquatic areas. You won't get a lot of snails, you won't get a lot of uh, mollusks, you won't get a lot of uh, arthropods because the water is so acidic that it actually eats away at their protective shell, um, rendering them basically food for anybody else and quite a, quite a soft little snack for, for larger fish and uh, other animals that live in the jungle. Um, what you do find a lot of though, uh, because there aren't these invertebrates that would normally consume uh, your, your plankton and stuff is a lot of planktonic uh, creatures. So you get a lot of um, algae, you get a lot of phytoplankton, uh, and these things all feed on the decomposing plant matter and they actually um, they, they provide a perfect environment for raising young fish. And so even though you don't have these conventional arthropods or, or uh, brine shrimp or whatever, uh, you'll actually, these fish can survive on this phytoplankton, which is part animal, part plant, uh, but all very soft shelled, like worms and that kind of thing. Uh, uh, something else that you'll notice uh, is that where I come from, it's because it's a temperate zone, so we've got summer and winter, we've got the seasons. It's not like the jungle where it's just, it's hot and wet for 90% of the time, right? You've got your rainy seasons, you've got your dry seasons, but for the most part, it's hot, things are growing, uh, and the nutrients are getting pulled out. So we've got basically during fall, winter, uh, early spring, that's like a fallow season, so the nutrients can build up. Uh, so a lot of the water around where I live is technically white water. So once again, lots of suspended sediment. Uh, the other thing that will happen um, because of that. 
because of that suspended sediment you get black mud rivers which is not technically the releasing of tannins necessarily but it's, it's dark soil that leaches up and colors the water uh, dark or tea colored or completely impenetrable. So that brings us to clear water setups which is kind of what this aquarium is here. Um, it does have a bit of a tint. I've been doing really large 50% weekly water changes on it uh, to try to combat an LJ situation uh, that happened because of a lot of bad events that combined. Um, so this is more of a tinted clear water situation. So this would be clear water usually happens where there's not a lot of sediment in the water and the water is being replenished uh, usually by like a mountain stream, that kind of thing. Um, fast running water or heavy rainfall or snow melt or whatever. Uh, and so that basically just keeps the water looking clean and pure and pristine. A lot of fish like these conditions. Um, Blagostomus actually really love this because uh, it gives their sucker mouths uh, something to grab onto and they can utilize that. They don't have to worry about predators, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so this is a, more of a clear water sit, set up. Uh, I would call it tinted clear water. So this is what you would see in a, in a, in a, a stream or a river uh, that's fast moving. Uh, you can also see this in lakes. Uh, because there's not a lot of water movement kicking stuff up or that kind of thing. Um, you might find lakes would be more green water. That's a different issue. Um, but generally, they would be considered a clear water environment as well. Uh, they will have a lot of decomposing vegetation, but a lot of that would be aquatic or just falling in off the banks, right? So these are great breeding places for uh, large predators uh, and the smaller prey fish that they feed on. Um, the only water setups that you'll really be able to create in your in your in your aquarium would be clear water like this uh, like most of the setups that you'll see honestly uh, nobody really likes that yellow tint to their water or, or anything like that they don't like the algae going on they don't like this muck right so this is all this is all just decomposing plant matter um, which is great for inverts uh, we'll talk about that another time um, yeah you won't really be able to create a uh, black mud river because you won't be able to see anything and your fish may or may not like that it'll, it'll be hard for it to find food that kind of thing uh, catfish love it because they they don't really have to look around they use their barbells to find food um, and white water is also kind of the same thing uh, there's just there's just too much going on visually to make your aquarium look good and to really be sustainable for your hardware because that if you've got that much sediment going around that will really wear out your filtration um, yeah so there you go you've got you've got the four kinds of water you've got black water you've got white water you've got clear water uh, and we talked a little bit about black mud rivers so hopefully you learned something and uh we'll see you again thanks for watching